Hi friends. Well, it's a fairly warm but breezy day here today on the ranch. Uh, warm but cold weather's coming, so I thought I'd put together this diesel heater they sent me. Um, I've watched a lot of videos about it to see how it goes together and the unboxing and all of that, so I'm going to uh, do that part quickly for you. If you really need an unboxing video, there's lots of them to watch. I got all the parts unpacked from the case there. This is the tube that shoots the air where you want it after it's heated. This would be the exhaust tube. Hooks on over here. Power cord. Air intake tube goes on this end. Air filter goes on that. Muffler goes on the exhaust tube. Package full of various clamps and uh, hose clamps and brackets. Holds it all together. H calorie or calorie. Calorie is a measurement of heat. So one of the things that I'm going to be real interested in with regard to this is measuring the heat. Now I'll do that with an infrared thermometer, but I wanted to make a comparison. I'm going to sit down over here and we're going to talk about it for a minute. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. I already have a diesel furnace in my 40-foot diesel pusher motorhome. Um, the diesel furnace in my motorhome works great. I love the hydronic heating system. It pumps uh, antifreeze around to different registers. I've got four different heating zones, the front, the kitchen, the bathroom, the bedroom. And it does a number of other things. It's a um, system that can run on electricity or it can run on diesel fuel. Uh, if, it, uh, if it's really cold and I need to heat the diesel engine to start it, it'll recirculate the engine antifreeze through the system and heat up the diesel engine for a cold start. It also heats water. As long as I've got uh, water in my 90 gallon fresh water tank and diesel fuel in my diesel fuel tank, I've got hot water, unlimited. It's a fantastic system. However, it's a $15,000 option when the coach was new. These diesel heaters that are being so popular about camping, whether it's a tent or a van or going out and sleeping in your Jeep for the night or even heating up. I know I've got a friend that's got two of them in a 40-foot school bus. And a coach like this doesn't really need it. But the comparison I want to make is that even though this system does a lot of different things, as far as just heating it up inside of there, my aqua hot diesel furnace is 45,000 BTUs. This diesel heater that we're talking about is 8 kW, and I had to convert that, but it converts to 27,000 BTUs, British Thermal Units. It has half of the heating capacity of the $15,000 unit that came in my 40-foot motorhome, and I love it. But there's one thing about it I'm not crazy about. First of all, if I, anytime I'm going to run my diesel furnace, um, I'm, I'm doing that hot water thing. So it's using more energy than it needs to, I think. It also, it's not very efficient. Um, last winter, sitting here in Sedona, Arizona, when it was getting down into the 30s every night, it was costing me for diesel fuel, that's a B, get out of here B, 
it was costing me for diesel fuel $300 a month. Now, diesel fuel was uh, about $5 a gallon, $5.40 a gallon sometimes here in this little small town near the ranch. So why am I even thinking about having a diesel heater that costs a couple hundred bucks? Well, a number of reasons that I'm interested in this. Number one, the maintenance on my uh, diesel heater in here is expensive. Uh, and if something goes wrong, it's really expensive. Um, I've had it repair three major repairs to the tune of between a thousand and fifteen hundred dollars <laughs> for the repairs. Um, and I've done that three times in seven years. Uh, just the, 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 the annual maintenance runs around fifty dollars if you don't have to replace an inside burner tube that's two hundred and fifty dollars which I've done uh, several times also anyway any little thing that goes wrong it costs more than this diesel heater so if something happens with this I'm interested in having another source of heat because cold wives don't work when you're camping <laughs> that's one reason Another reason is that I do have that uh, uh, Verver um, tent, and when I get to quartzite, I'm going to set that up, and maybe we'll cook in it, or maybe we'll play games in it, maybe we'll do whatever in it, sit around. But uh, having a portable diesel heater that can shoot some heat into that sounds great to me. I'm going to put it together, and then I'll show you where I want to install it in my motorhome. I have a great place for it back there in the engine bay and a great plan, I think it's great because I planned it, um, for how to uh, get the cold air return and the hot air in. I'm going to go put it together. First test I just uh, clipped it to the battery in the Jeep for a test. It's hot. Very hot. Can't hold my hand right there. Um, doesn't seem to be too loud. I mean, you're listening to it. Here's the Bluetooth app. It's on my iPhone. I'm taking a video of it with my other iPhone. I came inside because there's too much of a glare or reflection on the uh, phone screen out there. But I think I'm about 25 feet away. Um, the temperature is still changing there, so it's still hooked up. It says the internal temperature of the burner is 210 degrees Celsius. That's over 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Something's going on. It's set at 33 degrees uh, Celsius. It doesn't do Fahrenheit. That's the uh, uh, setting of the thermostat. And if it goes up three degrees above that or three degrees below that, it will shut off or turn on. Uh, up here it shows the ambient temperature right there. That's the room temperature. Uh, the app seems to be working fine. I've tried pushing the orange off button there and then it turns colors and you push the on button and it comes on bluetooth app working great thermostats working good so coming out of there i'm shooting 126 130 the outside of the tube 181 the muffler 86 degrees. That seems kind of cool. The pipe, oh, 218 degrees. And right back in there, 233 degrees. Hundred and forty-two coming out. I'm using a couple of ice packs to test and make sure that the thermostat is in that controller. 
I talked to the company and they said I could move that controller as long as I kept the three wires straight. And yes, it's lowering the ambient temperature on the sensor there. Um, now I'm using a hair dryer just to make sure that it also goes up and it does. So that means that I can put the controller inside my heated space inside my motorhome and keep the uh, diesel furnace outside. That's how I want to use it. I'm doing a proof of concept test. Hooked up to the diesel heater which is outside. We're going to go look at it. It is heat heating this place up very nicely and I've got it on low had it on high for a while turned it down maintaining the temperature in here just fine let's go outside as I said this is just a proof of concept test temporary setup to see how it's going to work heating a 40-foot diesel pusher. I have it set on the stepladder and uh, the hose going up there into the window. Again, just uh, temporarily hooked up to my Jeep again. I'm pretty happy with how it's working. Obviously now it's just taking the cold air out here and it's about uh, 41 degrees out here and it'll get down to mid 30s tonight but uh, it would be working even better if uh, I had the cold air return taking air out of the heated space and move the temperature sensor controller inside but uh it is cold out here whoo it's getting chilly out there very comfortable in here very comfortable it is yeah i'm uh i'm thinking this is a good deal i filled this little diesel tank at 7 p.m and ran it high and low switching it back and forth it's now 11.30 and that's how much it's used in four and a half hours. 11.28 p.m., 68.9 degrees inside my bedroom, 38 degrees outside. Still uh, putting out heat at level three and in the kitchen living room, it's 73 degrees. I've not had my main diesel furnace on all night. It's now 1.30 in the morning. It's 35 degrees outside and still 64 here in the bedroom. I've had the little diesel heater set on level 3 for these hours. And it's still 67 degrees out here in the kitchen living room where the heat is coming in. It's now almost 4 o'clock in the morning. It's 60 degrees in the bedroom, 32 degrees outside. In the living room kitchen, it's still 63. At four o'clock, I shut that diesel heater down and turned on my main diesel furnace in the motorhome because uh, if it gets down to freezing, I need to be heating my bays. Got a lot of water pipes down there. But for a test, um, very positive results. So from 7 p.m. to 4 a.m. in the morning, that'll be uh, nine hours, this is how much fuel it used. Really windy day here on the ranch. Not cold this afternoon, but uh, 41 mile an hour gusts. Well, the proof of concept tests are going well. Ran it again last night for about four hours. Right there's the diesel level, four hours worth. I think uh, that thing's going to go 10, 12 hours on a, on a tank of diesel. Not on high, but at a moderate setting. Well, as I've said several times, this is just a test to see if I really want to rather permanently install this thing 
back here where I plan to try to do that. I have this space in here. Uh, just build a little platform or a box, a little tray. Put it right in there. There's plenty of room. More than enough room. And then take the cold air return from, that's an access panel in my bedroom. It's an access panel to get to the transmission. But I can just put a cold air return through that and then run the hot air up through the bedroom. This is another access panel for the engine. Up through that panel into the closet. That one's in the closet. That one's in the bedroom. Up through the closet and up to the ceiling. That's my plan anyway. I'm not going to do that in this video, but I'll give you an update when I uh, get that going. Well, this video has been about uh, me and my motorhome and my plans and my testing of the H. Calori diesel heater, but I'm supposed to be doing a review. Let me tell you a couple of things about it. I like the fact that it's a suitcase style, so I can just pick it up and go. I like the fact that all of these parts and pieces that you need to make it work fit inside the case. And just pick it up and stick it in the Jeep and take off. I like the fact that it was uh, so easy to make this cardboard template to fit in the window of my motorhome and I could make a different template to fit in the window of the Jeep. Easy peasy. Uh, a couple of things I'm not crazy about. Let me show you this. This plug hits down here. All the factory has to do is turn the, recept the, the receptacle upside down when they put it together. Fixed. The other thing I don't like is this cheap, flexible fuel line. It's kinking right here. And inside the case... The other day, I, it kinked here when I put this stuff in to carry it around. And I had to cut the hose and redo it because it kinked. Um, not crazy about the cheap fuel line. Could be a better fuel line. Another thing that I'm not crazy about is this is the air intake. It needs more of a... Uh, cone on there, more more lip to affix a cold air return onto it. I'll make it work and I'll figure out whatever. Fine, I like it a lot. It heats my 40 foot diesel coach. It's not going to replace the $15,000 hydronic heating system that came with the coach, but hey, for 200 bucks as a backup or an auxiliary, yeah. I didn't talk about the cute little remote, and I didn't talk about it because the battery's not included, and I went to Ace Hardware, and they didn't have one. Plus, minus on the thermostat setting, on, off, and the mode switch. The phone, Android or iOS, works just fine with the app. Links and promo code JC10 down below. Thanks for indulging me today. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.